Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. This week is going to be a really fun one. For those of you who are joining me for the first time, my name is Marcy Melzer. I'm an intuitive speech language pathologist and language facilitation coach and consultant. I teach parents how to naturally facilitate speech, social skills, and school readiness. And today, I have a great, fun video for you. I've got a Timu haul. So a few weeks ago, if you're following the channel, you saw that I did a little Timu haul about sensory teethers. And you can scroll down in the live section of my video. That's where all the lives go. Um, to find that video if you're interested in looking at it. And because I did that, Timu has now made me an influencer. They sent me a little money and they want me to do it again. So I realized that coincidentally, I've been giving you lots of strategies videos, things to do and sort of ways to go about it, but there hasn't been very much demo or really how to about that process. And so I'm combining You'll need to be watching the videos and follow the strategies that I've been talking about. But these objects that I got, these things that I got from Timu today, we're going to be talking about helping. So let's get into what we're going to be covering today. So like I said, we've got a Timu readiness, school readiness Timu haul. And I've got some things that I want to share with you that I found that were inspiring to me. So today I'm going to be talking about school readiness metrics that you can and facilitate and I've got 11 items that I got from Timu that I use as a natural facilitator whenever I work with kids and I'm gonna give you facilitation focus ideas for each item now at the beginning sorry about my transitions aren't on this video I literally had to pull this together this week uh, this morning for you because this Timu haul arrived yesterday evening and I was so inspired by the things that I saw that I wanted to get it to you now like I said you're gonna have to be to really benefit from this video you're gonna have to be aware of some of my previous titles and the first one is this one this gestalt plus intuition is speed equals speech facilitation because um, we're going to be talking about facilitating language concepts using these items that I got from Timu. And then we're also going to be um, facilitating school readiness. So remember, I did a video a few weeks ago about 10 things you need for a successful school term. And included with that, I talked about these school readiness metrics. And these are the things that school is looking for to make sure that your child gets the green flag to be admitted to the regular education or school that you want them to go to. And here they are really quick. Can the child request help and answer simple questions? Do they respond when a teacher says no, don't or stop? Will the child play and interact with other children? And can they sit for a group lesson without distracting others? And will the child perform independently after instruction? So these are not um, colors, numbers, shapes, memorized things, your kid's name and address and phone number and that stuff so they can show up and pass a test. These are the things that help your child pass any test, not just the test that the school gives them, but the test that the evaluator, even the lady who registers you down, who's looking over the counter to see what's your child's behavior and are they doing and are they going to be a regular ed or a special ed, even the people at the counter, the registration people, the janitors, the people People around the building are analyzing you and your kid as you walk in. Everybody is. They People analyze you at the grocery store, all of that stuff. And so remember, these metrics are what makes your child look proficient enough to go to school, not acing every test once they get there. That's the job of the teacher. Your job as school readiness is to get the child ready with these metrics. So, okay, so... You can screenshot this and definitely watch that other video. The links to those videos are in the description of this um, video right here. 
So you can go back and review all of those. Now, this video is sort of brought to you by Timu. They sent me the money to buy the stuff. And so they want me to encourage you to do the same. So if you are new to Timu, you can download the app with my special code in the description and get 30% off of your item. And you are going to see how cheap these things are. This entire haul that I'm giving you was under $65. Like I got 65 and then there's one item that I didn't even put on here because I found it after I was doing it. I'll do it on a different video. But these 11 items were less than a hundred bucks and you could create a kit and and also what I want you to look at when I show you these things is inspiration. So you don't, you can buy these exact things. I'm going to tell you the price. I'm going to tell you how to find it. You've got to search on Timu to find your one because they change the items all the time. But you can use the keywords, find it, find the price. And then after I show you the item, I'm going to show you how to facilitate with it. So you can get yours with my discount code and all of that stuff or if you have things in your home that are similar use the things in your home that are similar this is just part of my thank you to timu okay so what we're going to be covering on each individual item at the top you'll see the item name and the price in us dollars that i paid or it cost me uh, with my timu money and then in each one you're going to see how you can teach information. What new information can you teach with this item? Analysis. How can this item be used to trigger the analysis part of your child's brain, right? How can this item challenge? How can you use this item to motivate new effort? Because all of these things are the things that your child needs to meet those metrics, right? So each item, I'm going to tell you how to do all six of these things with each one. So this isn't your typical Timu haul. This is education as well. <laughs> Excuse me. So number four is the language concepts. What new language concepts to get past scripts can you use these items to facilitate? And number five is movement. How do these activities activate neuroplasticity for faster progress? Because we've been talking about how movement is required. And then also pretend play which helps you expand the words into functional speech. So each one of the items that I cover today is going to be talking with each one of these characteristics so you can do it. All right, so let's get to the first item. They sent me this big giant bag with a, a zippy on top and I took everything out of it so that I can put it all in after I review it. And the first thing that I have is this animal balance game. So it came in a box like this. It says animal balance on the side and inside the box are the animals in a uh, container like this, a plastic bag that's Ziploc, which I like because you can put them back in here. And then this is the, it says animal balance. This is the balance um, holder, the balance thing, the thing that you use to balance. All right. So that's what comes in the box. Now, the this is wooden and like i said i like that it comes in a ziploc and there are i don't know how many animals in here lots the reason that i chose this is there are lots of animals in it uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen maybe twenty close to twenty at least fifteen okay and let me show you they're also super cute each one has a little pattern on it i don't know if you can see with my light so this hippo has some leaves and berries and stuff the monkey has bananas on it interesting the cheetah has i don't know they're just some random patterns so they're they all have little patterns on them oh it's supposed to it's supposed to look like spots but it's actually a, a geometric pattern it's going to be a little hard to see with my light so and then they're pretty small. So you can see them according to the size of my hand. That's the other thing that you have to be aware of with Timu is that when you see things on the website, they always seem to look a lot bigger than they are when you actually get them. These are little things for little hands. You can see them, com the animals compared to my size. And here is the balance thing. And the game that you're supposed to play is you balance these animals. This thing rocks when you set it on the thing and you balance them on top of each other like this. You can stack them on the picture on the thing they're all stacked like a pyramid so how this game so let's talk about this how i would use this game so 
the information that you can share is about the animals. So these I see hippo, monkey, some kind of monkey, camel, giraffe. They're all different animals. Here's an alligator or some kind of platypus, maybe something. All different sorts of animals in here. And you can talk about these animals, real things, the information about the animals themselves, the actual natural animals. And you can talk about their names, sounds, diet, and habitat. And then you analyze. You compare these toy aspects. What's different about the monkey that has bananas all over it versus a real monkey that has fur all over it, right? And the challenge of this game is a fine motor stacking and balance activity. That's what you do with it. And this game, you figure out how to work. You're going to have to learn how to play this game together and figure it out. Together, that activity will challenge your child's brain and activate what we need activated. The language concepts for this game are prepositions and pronouns. Where are they going? On top, under, around. Who is putting? Is it my turn, your turn? I put the monkey on top of the giraffe and the hippo goes next to the elephant, right? And he likes his friend. So. And that's the other thing you do in movement. You have all these things. You can sort, task, talk, balance, clean up. All these things you can do with these animals. You don't just have to play this game. You can do all kinds of things with these animals. Sort them out. Which ones are mammals? Which ones eat? grass which ones you know all that stuff and you can sort them by color you can do all that stuff you can stack them you can toss them in a bucket or in the bowl or whatever you can balance them like this and then you have to clean them up and they go in the bag and back in the box and where they belong okay and that's how you introduce the movement and the prepositions and the pronouns and the pretend play comes with based on reality or fantasy whatever you like about this thing it can be what the animals really do so this animal is killing this animal because they do or this animal is going to eat or this animal is whatever or you could be like the cartoons that your kids love where a lot of animals are you know personified and they give them personality so you're the big lion strong lion and you're the little tiny mouse and uh, the big lion is helping the little mouse you know these fantasy kinds of things bring up the ideas and all of that stuff in this one little balance game let me show you to one more time this one little balance game that I got for $6.48 can help you facilitate all of these things, okay? You can use it over and over and over again. Okay, so now we have to move into the next toy, the next thing that I have. I can let these things run a little bit longer. And that is this ice cream game that I got for $7.19. Now, this was probably my biggest disappointment from the Timu Hall. You always get one, and that's what it is. I bought this game. So look, it's $7.19. All you get is what's in this bag. And I'm going to show you what's in here. I had to put it together. So it was just these little pieces of plastic that come together. So you get a cone and a little stand. And then you put the cone on the stand. And then there are scoops of ice cream. I'll pull them out here with different um, flavors. They're cute. They've got one has got some cherries on it. This one looks like it's got some chocolate chips. This is like a vanilla. There's a green one, a mint one, something like that. And then this one's got, you know, some sort of stripe, strawberry stripe. So you, in this game, you stack these. It's sort of another balance game, but you stack and very carefully stack. And the reason I got this is because I like that it was food. And I know a lot of kids talk about food and a lot of kids know ice cream and a lot of kids know food. And there are things that you can do with this. So for $7.19, would I buy this again or do I recommend it? No, there are other things that you can use play food for. In fact, on Timo, there's a lot of other play food that I should have chosen. I could, You could have picked a tea party set. You could have picked uh, any one of those pretend play foods that sort of makes a meal. Those would be a better replacement for this object. So like I said, I'm not real excited about it, but... Let me show you if you do have food items in your house. 
or a game like that. We'll kind of put that one in the reject pile. Let me show you how to do the facilitation part. Okay, here we go. So in this case, what you're going to do, the info is about the function and the materials and the description. So again, you're coming back to what is this? Why do we use it? What is it for? Right? And it may be things you know, or it may not like how, why do we eat ice cream? It, because it's hot or because it's sweet or it's only dessert or we can't have it before dinner. All of that is the information, right? And and then with the analysis, you're going to compare these toy aspects to natural characteristics because we don't actually eat these things. We don't even put them in our mouth. So that's the thing that you can do when you got this, you know, ice cream cone. If you've got a pretend one, you can be the one to demonstrate your child assumes this is food and they will automatically put it into their mouth. That's what it's for. When you give them the other one, now this is pretend play. We're getting into that other part. But see, when you've got an ice cream cone here and you are the facilitator, you're going to demonstrate again all about this ice cream, whether your child knows it or not, because the language you use is going to be more expanded. You're not going to say it's an ice cream, say ice cream. You're going to say, look at my ice cream. I got an ice cream and I picked the green one because I like green ice cream so much. Yum, 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 yum. See how I'm doing it? I'm making the noises. I'm moving my mouth. All the things you can do, pretend I don't have to put this thing in my mouth and I can get all the same messages go through and demonstrate how to pretend. Even when you demonstrate they don't, your child will put the thing in your mouth and you can say, you don't have to put it in your mouth. It's not real food. It doesn't even taste good. It's probably germy. Ugh. So you can just pretend. Um, yum, 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 yum. Try it. And then they can be as obnoxious as they want while they're eating. And all that stuff. And the item stays cleaner. And they're understanding the difference between reality and pretend. And it's a different component in their brain that they're using. Play food is an amazing language facilitator thing. So like I said, here in the in the thing, you can compare it, you can talk about it, fine motor stacking and balance activity, this one is, but however you manipulate these things, if you're cutting that, for, I love the Velcro food that you cut all of the stuff that you manipulate these this food, and then prepositions and pronouns. Who is eating? What is eating? We're putting it on the plate. It's hot. It's cold. There's adjectives, adverbs, all kinds of language concepts about that food that relate to real food, but you get to play with it all you want and over and over and over again because it's not real food. You don't have to eat it. It's not messy, all of that stuff. And movement, of course, all these things, sort, stack, toss, balance, clean up, wash the dishes, pretend it's hot, all those things. And that's what this pretend play is, fantasy or reality. And that's, again, where you're thinking about who is eating. Are you eating cars or are you eating food? Or are you having cars for lunch because you're a car robot and you like to eat cars and everybody else is eating spaghetti, but you eat cars? It doesn't matter. All of the concept of eating and food and in your mouth and chewing it up and crunchy and yucky tasting and spit it out and I don't want any more. I'm all full and all those concepts get to come out while you're pretend playing with food. So pretend play with food, this particular item, not so good, but you've got stuff at home and you can find it. And so that's a very, very good, effective, natural language facilitation tool that directly applies to real life stuff. So don't pay $7 for stuff. All right, now we've got pop tubes. I've shown you pop tubes before on my sensory haul, and I got them again because I think everybody needs to have them. They are good for everything, lots and lots of things. Let's just look at them. I, I know you've seen what they look like. I got four in this pack. I just got a little pack because I just want to show them to you. These come in all sizes, tiny, long, fat, skinny, and they make noises. And you can match them, you can put them together and make shapes, and you can blow in them. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You can do all kinds of things. You can make them into telephones, all sorts of things with these pop tubes. Highly recommend, put them in your child's Christmas stocking or Hanukkah, whatever, or whatever you do, because these, and they, they get destroyed really fast. So when they get destroyed, throw them out and get new ones and use these a lot. And here is how you use them. So, number one, the info. What's it made of? What is it?
Sorry about that. My internet got glitchy for a second. Hopefully I'll come back here for you. Yep. All right. So the you're going to analyze using all of your senses, hearing, smelling, blowing, sensing, uh, all of your senses, analyze. And this is true for any sensory thing, right? And then you're going to challenge. What can you make this thing do? Can you make it but can you put them all together? Can you make a big circle? Can you spell out your name? You know, whatever, all these things. That's the challenge. Because it's not just pull and push, pull and push, pull and push. What can we do? How can we elevate these things? This is what's important for every one of these concepts for you as a facilitator. You've got to it, it, expand the regular things to do with these toys, right? Because you know the child and you know how to do it and you're gonna introduce adverbs and adjectives and feelings. How does it feel? How does it make you feel? Is it annoying when I do this over and over again or does it soothe you? Do you want, do you like, do you wanna make it all, do you like pushing or pulling better? You know, all of those things about these experiences because these pop twos are sensory experience. And that's why I said any sensory experience, you could put all of them together and you have a whole sensory experience time or you can just use one at a time like these pop tubes the movement obviously all sensory things involve some kind of movement pushing pulling popping blah 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 and pretend play so that's the other thing that even i want you to be aware of and i want you to expand your personality because even these things remember we anthropomorphize things all the time on the videos the kids do they personify they make them into people or things so now you've got the blue boy and the red boy are friends and they are walking to the park together they're not even anything but pop tubes but with your imagination facility facilitator, you can make them into anything. You can also make them into objects, toothbrushes, microphones, hair combers, you know, boomerangs, whatever you want. These pop tubes are incredibly versatile, especially when you combine your imagination. And you've got to combine your imagination as a facilitator. Your connection with the child, that's why that gestalt plus intuition part works, because you know what your child loves. You know their favorite color. You're not going to take their favorite color. You're going to let them have their favorite color, and you're going to pick another one and say, my favorite color is yellow. And then they're going to have be holding their favorite color, red or blue or green, that you know because you know them. And when they have their favorite thing and they do it, they use it, boom. Now they're connected. Now they're listening. Now they're learning. And all you're doing is playing with tubes. And it takes five minutes to pull this out of your purse or your bag or your glove compartment and, and play and have some pretend play time with just stuff you find. And it doesn't have to be these toys either. You can use sticks or rocks or you know, anything. You'll see as we get into the videos. So the idea here is to use your imagination with these things and expand them. It's not just a sensory thing but you can pretend it's something or someone, even if it's not a real object, okay? And that's really what helps your kids do it. Okay, so now we've got the microphone. Microphone, where's my microphone? All right, so the microphone, <laughs> when I got this, it was one of those, um, we use these as speech therapists. They've been around forever. They used to be a lot bigger. They're made in China. It's called an echo mic. It says echo mic right here on it. And when you talk very closely in the echo mic, it, you can hear an echo. It changes your voice, okay? So the motivation behind this is to motivate the child to get talking, right? As a speech therapist, I use these a lot because it's fun to make your mouth do different things and it doesn't work. It's literally just a piece of plastic with a string inside and it makes some change in your voice and it's not activated by anything but your voice. So this toy is useless unless there's some neuroplasticity towards some verbal vocal expression. Even it's ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Even if it's that, right? Because that kind of thing only lasts very long. You can start with that. If your child doesn't imitate, you just start making sounds and they'll imitate the sounds. And then once they start imitating the sounds, then you start saying words. That was crazy. I love that noise. You are such a smart child. You are amazing. So you see how 
just using a little thing like this can motivate, attract, connect, and get your child using their mouth when previously they were using their hands for entertainment on devices and stuff. This is a great thing to replace that phone with. It's in your child's hand. They've got to use their mouth and it doesn't work. Now, if you bang it on things, it also makes a noise. So they could get into that as well. And they might learn how to do it if your child's a tapper. So Let's look at how to use this microphone. Number one info, what is it? What does it do? How do you use it? What is this thing? And then you're going to experiment. Start experimenting. Watch me do it. Listen to how I sound when I do this. Hold it close to your mouth and see if it works really good. Hold it far away from your mouth and see how that doesn't work. Oh, you've got to hold it close to your mouth. And then how do you sound? What can you make? Listen to me. Can you make what I make? These are the challenges that get your child trying harder. And then the language concepts, you can teach anything. You teach pronouns, my turn, your turn. How do you sound? How do I sound? How does he sound? The, the boys sound like this. Ooh, he sounds very low. Boy, he in the same sentence, right? All of those things, any concept. Like I said, speech therapists use this for everything from the R sound to kids responding to their name. You can teach anything with this little microphone because it's very motivating for your kid if you do it right. And then, of course, there's movement. You're holding it and talking it and you putting it in the right place by your mouth, all of that stuff, and then pretend play. Who's performing and what's the show? It's a microphone. Who's putting out a show? Is it a lecture? Is it a, uh, a rock concert? Is it a ballad? Is it a poetry reading? Why are we talking? Why do we want the world to listen to us? What's important for us to say? That's how we use the microphone, okay? So microphone was number four four in the Timu Hall. Hope you're enjoying this, everybody. Moving, we got to move forward into the next item. And that is this little press car that I have for $3.98. This is, was a pretty good, um, a pretty good buy. It's a little cheap, but I liked it anyway. This is the school bus one. I got the school bus one because we're doing a school readiness, but they had options of choices to pick um colors there was a blue one and a red one and they were different they were also it had indicators for vehicles so it's gonna be a little hard to see without my light but there it says school bus on here there's a cu picture of a couple little kids you can barely see right there is some it says school bus and there's a stop sign same on the other side. And what I like too about this is when you're just holding it in your hand, you can see the gears because it's clear. So how this car works is when you push it down, the wheels turn, right? And so you can see when you push it down, the wheels, the gears inside are turning. There's a, a worry thing. All the gears are visible. So, and there is even a little, there's, um, if, if you look really closely in the front, there are drivers. There's a, a three little bears that spin around. So there's lots of action just when you push on this thing. And it makes a noise too, a whoosh noise, right? So this is the push car. And obviously I don't have a way to demonstrate how it works, but you put it on the car, you go like this and it goes, whoop, it goes going, okay? When, as soon as it comes up, oops, I just pushed it down. That's it. All right, so let's look at how to use this little press car. So again, lots of kids love vehicles. So I had to include a car just like I had to include the food. This was $3.98. And for $3.98, you can talk about what, obviously, it is a car. What do cars do? Where do they go? What's this car made of? Look at how you can see the all the things that I described for you. It's a school bus one. We can see all the gears, all of those things. Now we want to compare this little car to reality. The school buses you see in the world. That's why I picked school bus because they're around a lot this time of year. And the, you'll see um, opinions. Do you like it? I like the yellow one. I like the blue one. Remember, I picked this one because I like yellow and I like some buses. But if your child likes police cars, they're going to choose the police car one, right? And so the challenge is how do we make it go? You have to learn how to make this thing go. It works a unique way. You don't just go back and forth, back and forth. You have to push the special button. And you have to make it avoid obstacles. Or you maybe you want to make it crash. Or, you know, how can I crash down? all the cups as I, you know, do this thing. Maybe you want to make sure you uh, do an obstacle course with it or you race, you know, the two of you. 
these challenges just with these cars, right? It's just another way that you can include these cognitive concepts into your play and facilitate while you're having a good time. The language concepts you're going to teach, sharing, it's my turn, your turn, pronouns, who's going to do it, who's going to set up the cups, um, and and the prepositions, uh, it fell down, it crashed into it, up and down and in and out, all of the prepositions. Is it working? How fast is it going? All the adverbs about this car concept, it all depends on what your challenge is, is where the language concepts go. So if you're going to make it go, you've got stop and go and fast and slow and it's not going or it went too fast or it went without me waking and or, I let go and it went by itself, you know, all that stuff. And then avoiding obstacles. Oh, no, it crashed. It's under the bed it went behind the couch how are we going to get there all of those things see this is language that you can talk about when this little car gets in trouble okay and then the movement obviously lots of movement with cars you watch it move you push it you share it you give it you carry it you retrieve it when it gets under the couch and then pretend play who is driving where are we going all of this stuff because it's not just a car that we can crash it's a vehicle a bus that takes kids to school for a reason because they like to go there and they're going to see the teacher and learn all about that stuff and if your child's going to go to a school They'll see these buses, even if they're not going to ride on them. And so it behooves you to start talking about these experiences that the child will going to have or other children are having because they see these things. And that's your child's experience. So that's how you can facilitate. So that's the push car toy. And again, I got that for $3.98. Okay, so <laughs> moving to the next one. Uh, yeah, before we go there, I just want to thank you for watching, everybody. Um, and like and subscribe. This is your opportunity. Please hit the like button. That helps me out a lot on my channel. All right, so number six, we've got the phone. Now, I call it a phone um, because it is the original kind of, you know, the old ones that we used to pick up a receiver on a dial thing. I don't know if many of you remember that, but... Um, it looked like this, where it, was, it had a handle with a part that you listen to and a part that you talk in. And we don't see those things so much on this device, even though there is a part that you listen to and a part that you talk in. And you know what I said? So this thing, just like the microphones, these have been around forever. And this was a pleasant surprise. So while the microphone is very flimsy and kind of small and only does this when you do, this little device here, um, they, it's a sturdy, sturdy plastic, much sturdier than this. It's much heavier duty. And you'll be able to use this for everything. Speech therapists, reading teachers, everybody does it. In fact, that's what they call it is sort of a, a feedback device or a phone, something like that. So how you use this, it was only $1.79. Best investment, I think, of the thing. I don't know, maybe I don't, a few of them are, but this one was really good, $1.79. You can talk about what this thing is and how it is different than the other phone that you have and how you use it. And the goal of this job, the goal of this thing is comparison and auditory feedback. And that's the challenge is this child is listening to themselves. So any child, when they start listening to their own speech, while you are talking to them, they will compare themselves to you and they will change to be more like you. So as you're teaching language concepts, these are the way. Remember, we talk in, in, in language facilitation about the right words, the right way at the right time. This is the right way. You are speaking with the right volume, with the correct speech sounds and clarity. Everything's clear, produced correctly, all the sounds there, all the syllables there. This is what you teach with this phone. How does good speech sound? And you're holding and talking, and that's the movement. And the pretend play is phone calls and information sharing. So you want to use it like you would a phone. And instead of the child listening to you talking to them, they will hear themselves talking because it's an automatic feedback loop. So they'll hear if you're talking about 
you know, the push car and you say, I push the car and you've got a phone and they've got a phone. And so, like I said, it appears that you're, they're connected and they're talking to you and you're talking to them. But in reality, you're only talking to yourself. You're listening to yourself speak. That's what this is for. Auditory feedback. It makes your brain change so quickly. That's how, remember, I talked about on the TPR video about the pronouns. When you give pronouns and you start using, I want to do this and I like that and you you can have a turn after I'm finished, all of that stuff, this is when you know that your child will start picking it up because they'll be listening to you and then they won't hear it when they say it. And then the next time they say it, they'll include it or they'll fix it or they'll repair it. They'll find themselves repairing. If you are talking the right words the right way at the right time, all that slow talking stuff while you're working with child kids together, this is for the child who is aware that their speech is delayed or hard to understand and they want to work on it. So you use this thing while you play, while you read, while you look at stuff, and this is how you do it, right? So your volume of speech When you speak quietly, they will speak quietly. They will hear the difference. When you speak loud, they speak loud. They'll pull this thing right away from their ear. It's too loud. They won't speak loud because it. they won't scream anymore, right? And they'll hear how good they sound. So this pretend play too is all about phone calls and information sharing and all the things that you need. And for $1.79, you can facilitate all this stuff. All right, so here's number seven. This was one of the most expensive items that I had. It's a felt storybook, okay? So it's a pretty complex thing. It came in a whole big thing. So you can see that it's pretty big. Uh, It's probably eight and a half by 11 size. And what it is, is a cute little felt thing. I pulled out some already, but I'll show you the thing first. It's got a button uh, connector to hold it together. And when you open it like this, you can see that there are pouches. So all of the stories there are four stories there are four story songs in this and i've got the pieces here whoops sorry about that drop my alligator so one of the stories or there's another one that's missing um one of the stories is the five little ducks and one of the stories is five frogs on a speckled log and one of them is the monkeys jumping on the bed and the other one is the monkeys in the alligator the monkeys in the tree and the alligator my green screen's not letting them look very green but they are super cute they're super big they are felt but um they don't stick on here there is a velcro dot on the back of each one of the pieces and that's what helps it stick when you pull them off you can put them inside in your little carrying case into the pockets so you keep them all together and there's four stories you could put each one in the four things i love that and you can make the story on the back or you can make the story big on the whole thing i love that and i love it so this is super portable and all the pictures are cute and you can see i'll show you really quick You have to cut, there just is one little tab so they don't come off that you have to just snip with the scissors. So here's the five little ducks and their pond. So you can make the whole environment for them. Here's the speckled frogs. It even says five little speckled frogs on here. You can't see because it's green. And then here's the monkeys jumping on the bed. Super cute. And, oops, it's just reversed. The monkeys uh, and the alligator and the tree. So. That is the felt storybook. So how you're going to use this, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but there's all the language that you can't see. So if your child doesn't like books, this is a great introduction to storytelling where it's not just turn the page, turn the page. It involves extra manipulation. So the info that you're going to share yes this is a song now i really want you to use your imagination your child is going to see these characters they know these things and they're going to start singing five little speckled frogs and i heard the five little ducks they're going to start singing or even just making the tune because remember 
your child might know these things, but they don't know every word in them. And they don't know all the vocabulary and they don't even understand the story. They just know it because they're reciting it and they see the monkeys jumping or the, you know, alligator snapping or whatever. And they think that's funny. So here's your opportunity to Talk about the language for all those things. The monkeys jumping, their head hurting, calling the doctor, the mom being, you know, angry with them because they're jumping on the bed, but they do it anyway. Those naughty monkeys, all of that stuff, right? That's when you don't have a video that's going on, you know, you have you with this thing to recreate these favorite rhymes that your kids love with new stories to expand them and relate them to their own personal experience. And that's what's really important with all of these. That's why you, as this child's parent or caregiver, are the primary facilitator, right? So the the job here with the storybook is you're going to share the time frame, the characters, the environment, the storyline. They live in a pond. They live on a raw on a log you know whatever um the an analyze relating to their previous experiences curiosities when did they ever see ducks when did they ever go swimming when did they ever jump in the water when did they ever eat bugs they didn't eat bugs they eat something different right so that's the analysis that does goes beyond just singing the song right and the challenge is to create new stories with the familiar characters so what do the monkeys do instead of jumping on the bed or what did they do after the doctor what did the doctor say if they went back and jumped on the bed did he get mad did he yell at him? What happened? Right? That's how your family deals with when kids do naughty things and they test boundaries. That's what these songs are for. And you can use it to teach all of these concepts. These are the social skills and friends and dealing with authority that come from the rules and morals and lessons we learn from these songs, the monkey and the alligator and the guys jumping on the bed. Movement. These are all about movement. You turning the pages, you're manipulating those things, you're sorting them out, you're keeping them in the right things, or you're mixing the stories together if you want. Who cares? This is your imagination. Pretend play is unlimited when you have this kind of situation because you can mix the stories together. You can add more, okay? So now the next thing we've got moving into is stringing beads. Let me look really quick. I've got a comment. Boopender says, Marcy, you're amazing. Thank you for watching, Boopender. And I really hope that you guys are getting some tips from this Timu haul because, I mean, I'm not in it to sell Timu stuff. I'm in it to help you. And I know that sometimes these tools, these little toys will inspire you because I know you have it in you to connect with these kids and teach them how to do what they need to do and catch up their speech and all of that stuff. But you could be stuck in old habits and just not really knowing how to shift yet. And just get your own little Timu haul and open the bag and explore it with your child, just like we're doing on this video. And you will be so inspired. Just think about shopping at the store when you're going to buy that thing your child wants, like they're obsessed with the train or whatever. I remember one of my families in, in Sydney, Australia, their little guy's obsessed with trains. And once he learned to talk, he would tell his mom exactly what kind of train he wanted them to buy from the store with the kit that he wanted and the, the set that he wanted, the environment, the situation, because he wanted to expand his train knowledge. He didn't want to just go choo, 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 choo. This kid was train obsessed. And so he wanted every kind of train and learned what they use for and what travels on them and all of that stuff. And this is what happens when you explore things with your kids and then go all in, go down the rabbit hole of whatever they're learning. Because while you're exploring the things that they love, they're learning the language for it around you. And then they become an expert and they start to sound really sophisticated when they talk about their favorite thing, all because you played with toys about it and showed them the language. And this is what you want, folks, okay? All right, let's get moving forward. Stringing beads. Here are the stringing beads. So now I'm not real excited about, once again, these are really small. Um, so 
I would choose a bigger one, um, but I wanted to say cheaper and they did have some bigger ones, but I wanted to say cheap and I just wanted to use them for an example really to tell you about the strategies anyway. But I liked that this came in a Ziploc um, <clears throat> that, so that you can put them all back in. You might want to replace it with a cloth pouch or a, uh, some kind of thing that's more permanent, you know, a plastic bin or something like that because these are really small. But I like them because there is an instruction book. I don't know, they give you some examples. Whoa, that's kind of cool. They give you some examples of these are all the different shapes that are included in the thing. And it actually involves some connectors and their string. So it, it, it gives you some examples of how you can do. So look, even you could explore the info card with your lay talker and see these things and you could copy these things. So here's some inspiration right here from the toy about different ways that you can play with this. Now, of course, this is a visual representation and any child, nonverbal child, could pick up this toy potentially and learn how to do this. But your job as the facilitator is to talk them through the process, whichever process you pick. If you're gonna make a, a necklace or you want to sort all the yellow ones out because you like yellow best and or you want to make a pattern so that's what we're going to talk about here that's what i the reason i like these beads is because stringing beads and using tiny objects that are similar in shape but different in color help you make patterns and patterns are necessary for the brain to learn functional, spoken, accurate grammatical structure because there are patterns in every language and there are rules in every language. And that's what patterns are. There's a rule, three and two and three and two or yellow and red and yellow and red, right? All of that stuff. And as you're working with these concrete patterns using stringing beads, it activates the part of your child's brain that also facilitates language. And of course, because you're talking while you're doing it, you're going to get all this happening for you. So the info is the colors, the demonstration of the stringing or sorting and how to do this. You want to always do a physical demonstration first before you ask your child to do it. You see it on the picture. You show them how to do it. You put it here. You push it here. You string it here. First goes this, then goes this, all of that stuff. And then you're going to compare these colors to natural colors. This is green like broccoli. Is it the same green as broccoli? This is orange like a pumpkin. Is it the same orange as pumpkin? But pumpkins are orange. All of that is language exposure for your child to learn just while you're stringing beads, okay? Now, the challenge is to recreate patterns or advance patterns. That, that That's the cognitive job that you are potentially missing out on when you're just putting the bead on the thing and developing the fine motor. You always think about what you do, everybody. So add the cognitive concept in, the preposition, which one's next? Yellow is next to green is next to this. This one's in front, this one's in back. This is the beginning of the line, the end of the line, right? All of those things in sequence and prepositions, these are the concepts you teach with the stringing. And then you carry them over to other things in your life. Who's first in line, last in line? Who goes first to take a chance at, you know, swinging the baseball bat, that kind of thing. Movement. Obviously, this is a fine motor stringing, sorting, cleaning up, in the bag, out of the bag, get them under, if they retrieve under the, if they go under the table or fall on the floor, all of that stuff has to happen. And then your pretend play with these is you're creating animals and jewelry. Just like with those pop tubes, you can personify everything, make a big snake, it's gonna come and get you, all of that stuff, okay? So stringing beads is another really, $3.38 is what I paid for this one. All right, and the next one is a fishing game that I got for $5.48. Once again, there are options, many options for the fishing game. And I chose the one that speech therapists use. Now, they have uh, on Timu a lot of ones with longer sticks that had wooden, uh, wooden fish that you can pick up that had numbers on them or they were colors or whatever. But those were already pre-printed <clears throat> on wooden blocks, kind of like that animal sorting, that animal balance activity that I had. This one is different, it's small. You can see, compared to my hand, the fish are about the size of my hand. And the fishing poles are very small. They're tiny, let's see if I can get them out of this bag. Yep, so the fishing poles are small with short little things. 
easy peasy to use. The longer the string, the harder the fishing, okay? So if you're gonna use these things, you can use these little, and I love that there's two, so each one of you can have one, so you don't have to give it up. You can demonstrate and they do, and demonstrate and they do, I love that. So two fishing poles, and then these fish, actually the magnet part is just this little tab. It's a it's on both sides and there's different colors, blue, yellow, orange, red, super cute little fish here. The only ones you can't see are green cuz my green screen. But here's a blue one and an orange one. Look at their cute little faces. They make different faces. Super cute, right? Here's even a blue one with a different face on it. I love that they make different faces and I love that they're blank and I love that you can write on them. So you take, it comes with a dry erase marker with an eraser and the cap all on right there. And then you can write, um, you know, anything you want to um, see. Like, let's say you want the child to recognize their name, okay? And their name is Joey. So you could write their name, Joey, on one fish. And then you write... This is a reading game. You write this on another one. You write Toey and Joey, and you say, catch the one that's your name. Don't catch the one that's not your name. Or if you want to make it harder, look, I erased it. You could just write. So you have Joey on one and mom on the other, and then don't catch my fish or catch my fish, right? It doesn't matter. It's all about what they are. You can also put pictures on these. So if your child can't read, you can draw a picture of an ice cream cone. Boop. Bad picture of an ice cream cone. <laughs> My finger's in the way. So you can draw a picture of an ice cream cone or you can cut out pictures and paper clip them to this because it's super thin. The paper clip will also be magnetic. So, and then they wipe off right away. And when you're all done, they go back in the bag. So the bag that they came in is not really good for storage. You're going to need to put these into something else because they will bend. They will break. This is one of those toys that you will use. Um, together with your child. It's not one of those toys that you leave accessible all over the place. In fact, I recommend that you keep all your Timu Hall toys in your special Timu Hall bag put away. And then when you need something to fill a time, you go to your Timu Hall closet and find your materials because in your language facilitation workbook, you'll be making an itinerary of all the things you're going to be doing and all the concepts you want to be teaching. And so if your concept of the week is, you know, fast and slow, you're going to be pulling out the car. If your concept of the week is, you know, whatever, you'll pull out the materials that you need. So you should keep a little closet put away that these toys, because it keeps them novel, it keeps them interesting. That's why they like the speech therapist when they show up with the big bag of toys. What she got in there? What's new for me? Why you're watching this Timu haul? You want to see what she's got for you to see, right? So that's the thing. So I love this fishing game. I love all kinds of fishing games. And there's all kinds of reasons that, I love them. Let me show you. Whoops. Okay, here we go. So information is this concept. What is this fishing activity? You don't pick them up with your hands. You use the string. You use the fish. You've got to demonstrate how that works. No hands, all of that business. And yay, you caught it. Your fish is bigger, all of that business. And then analyze. Like I said, depending on your game or your activity, which fix are better. If you put numbers on them, you could put numbers on them. Get the number that's higher. Get the numbers in order. Get the, num the letters of their name in order. You know, all of those different kinds of things you can teach with this or even just the fine motor activity. You don't have to put anything on the fish at all and just catch the one that's happy, catch the one that's sad, catch the one that's angry because they got faces on them. So that, that's what I love about this particular one. It was super cheap too, 548 and it's all laminated. If you take good care of it, this could get you really far. So written words and numbers, all of those things, as your kid gets closer to school readiness, they're gonna be playing a lot of games like this. So you'll be able to do this at home. And if you have more than one child turn taking, it's a super good game for that. The movement is right there. Balancing, catching fish, taking it off, putting it on um, um, and pretend play. I pretend these are real fish and we're going to cook them up and eat them for dinner and, you know, what kind you like and all of that stuff. They're, you're, 
pretend play is all about your your imagination and even the fish can be a fish family right you've got the mommy fish and the daddy fish and the little boy fish and all of that all of that is possible with this fishing activity so I know that it could really help you to get ready for some of these more structured kind of school jobs that I know they're going to be doing in kindergarten and preschool. Okay, number 10, we're getting close to the end, is the mini people that I got for $5.48. All right, so once again, it is what it is. <laughs> it was hard for me to find mini people. My favorite toy that I had almost every session with me when I was a therapist and and now as a facilitator is the Little Tykes mini people. I like them because they're chunky. I like them because they go in things. I like them because they got all kinds of environments, farms and zoos and all that stuff, buses and airplanes and construction vehicles and all that stuff that those little people and they are easy, easy to pretend play with because I've got a bus. I could put the superheroes in the bus one week. I could put the, the princesses in the bus another week. I could put the the seven dwarfs in the bus another week and they were all going to a different place because they're all going on the bus. You know, other people use school buses for things to go places besides school. Now, people that I found on Timu, not so great, but in their own right, they're okay. So this is the whole pack and there are one, two, three, four, five, six people in here. And these, they're, what they are is their community helper people. So I've got a, this is a airplane pilot. Okay. And we've got a veterinarian with a puppy and we've got a firefighter and we've got a mail carrier. I'm going to put them by, by my black so you can see them that way. Yeah. Mail carrier and a chef and a police officer and a Looks like a plumber, maybe construction worker of some kind. He has a toolbox and a hat. So these guys are little compared to my hand, compared to my finger, <laughs> right? They're small, but they're very detailed and they have things. They're holding their equipment. You can definitely tell what they do and who they are by how they look here. Uh, the veterinarian super cute with her little puppy and she's got a doctor kit here. So these are the Timu version of little people <clears throat> that I could find for you. And so if you have Timu people or if you have little people, that, like I said, my suggestion, you can do these things with them. So, <clears throat> excuse me, first of all, you're going to examine them, examine the characters, talk about their roles. In this one, <clears throat> they've got special jobs, they've got special things, they've got special stuff, they engage with people for certain problems, all of that stuff. And then, which one do you like? Which one do you like to be? Or which job would you like to do when you grow up? Remember, we start talking about these things a lot in school. And if your child already has some idea of who they want to be when they grow up because of what they like to do, and they can talk about that when they go to school, they will look like a rock star, you guys. They have to know who they are and be able to tell people what they like, what they don't, jobs they love, jobs they hate. When they can talk about this stuff, <clears throat> and they, they look great. They look perfect for school. So you can um, talk about the challenge part is how to help these characters. How do they do tough jobs? How do, what do they do if they have to climb up to the top of a, a house if it's on fire? You know, all of that stuff, the problems they have in their jobs. Everybody has problems in their jobs because it's not all about we help people. How do they help people? What do they do? And how is it hard? How, why doesn't everybody want to be a firefighter, right? Language concepts are the social skills and responsibility. That's what people can help you teach very easily, especially these community helper people. And how is the responsibility carrying over to your life in your house? What are you responsible for keeping safe or cooking or fixing, right? Okay, movement. How to manipulate these figures, make the environment. You can make dollhouses. You can put them in your bus. You know, all of that stuff. Like I said, wherever they play is more thing to talk about. Whatever they do is more to talk about. How they feel 
is what to talk about. What they say to their friends, what they say to their customers, what they say to all their the people they help, the firefighter. What does he say to the little girl to make her feel safe? All of that stuff is what you can use these mini people to facilitate. And the pretend play is, you know, unlimited, obviously unlimited. So that's what you're going to use these little people for to help you figure out, tell stories. What are people for? What's the community about? What are you doing? So the ones that have the roles, the ones that have jobs are really good. All right. Number 11. Finally, we're getting to the end of this. I know for those of you who are still staying with me and those of you on the replay, I appreciate it's a geo puzzle now. The geo puzzle that I chose is this one. Um, so it has circle, rectangle, triangle, square, and pentagon. And there they equivalent the numbers are there. So it has one hole, two holes, three holes, four, five. So there's tons of concepts, right? And the colors are there, and the order is there, and you can pull them all apart and you can sort them and shape them. This one is very small, it's not treated. So um, the ones that I used to use were like the Melissa and Doug kind of versions, but for this price, you can get, especially with your 20% off, you don't play with these toys real long with kids. These concepts come pretty easily. So that's why you have to be super creative because these are the kind of toys that sit in the bottom of the toy box if you leave them accessible for a child by themselves, okay? This is a toy to keep in your thing to play with your child. And here is how you do it. So first of all, for the info, you're going to describe and demonstrate what you can learn. The numbers, the shapes, the, the colors, the order, the pattern. You're just, whatever the concept is that you choose, that's what you're going to describe and demonstrate at the beginning of your lesson. And then Montessori learning is find the concepts. So this is a Montessori type toy. Tons of these Montessori, any of these puzzles can work for you. You probably already have some or you were gifted some. Your job is to find all of the concepts, not just this concept of this is how it goes. When this is done, it's correct, right? Montessori says this is just one way that this is correct because you could do all the blue on the bottom. All, you know, there's all, the pattern here could change. Um, lots of different ways this can be a correct concept. And that's what Montessori believes, okay? So your job as the facilitator is to understand these concepts because your child doesn't yet. And these toys offer you the opportunity to explore. What if we do this with it? What if we do that with it? What if we try this? What will, will it work? Will it not? Experiment and see. That's how the Montessori way works to learn these concepts through experiential learning, trial and error. That's what puzzles are for. And all the Montessori puzzles, all of them have these components. There are more than one way to put it together, to allow a child to use the knowledge they have with manipulating the experiences, the motor skills to activate the neuroplasticity and build learning that wasn't there before. It's not just about the puzzle's done, I can do it in five seconds. If your child is doing puzzles in five seconds, that means they're too easy right? Because the object of a puzzle is to activate your puzzling brain. Some people don't like puzzles because they don't want to work that hard. They just want to know what it is. Just give me the answer, please. And this facilitation journey is going to be a lot like that for you, depending on your mindset. If you just want to know the answer and just want your kid to start talking because you do something cause and effect, then the solution is you have to talk a lot more and be patient. But if you really want to guide that language to fill in the spaces that your child's missing, the language that they missed, that's what this whole platform is about, is facilitating what your child doesn't have, what they don't know yet. Because what they do know, they're showing you through the communication behavior that they use right now. And you don't like it. You want it to change. It's not enough. It's not clear enough. It's not detailed enough. It doesn't include spoken language. It's a combination of scripts and behaviors and whatever your child's using. 
these toys will allow you to set aside your time every single day. So three of your facilitated activities out of the four you do every day can be functional jobs, eating together, riding in the car, taking a shower, getting dressed, whatever you got to do. But one, at least every day of your activities. If you are in the job of school readiness, you could have hours of this all day planned. If you've got a two or three hour block every day where you are homeschooling school readiness time, you've hired a facilitator to come in and do it. That person should have an itinerary of activity after activity, 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 five minute activities to fill that entire three hour period with. And if it's only a five minute, you can't fill it a three hour period with stuff out of your bag. You have to go cook something or fix something or build something or do something or create something because that takes time and it includes multiple steps. And that's what your child needs to prepare them to go to school. So your facilitator, one of the jobs a day can be one of these toys, but the rest of them have to be functional things, but they all have to focus on those school readiness metrics or they won't be ready. And then you'll be turned away next year. And we don't want that. We want your child next year to show up ready to go, ready to talk, ready to be social. And if they're in school now, you can use these things in your home time every day to facilitate the concepts that you know your child is missing. Are they using pronouns wrong? Are they asking questions um, accurately? Are they answering questions accurately? Are you asking questions appropriately? Are you asking questions that you already know the answer to trying to get your child to imitate things. All of that stuff is going on right now in your trial and error. This Timu Hall will help you stay organized. It will help you use your workbook to find the concepts that are missing in your child, use these activities to teach them, and watch the improvement happen, everybody, every single day. We want to see 1% improvement in at least all these activities. And so if you pick pop tubes as your thing to try, then how are you going to make this improve next time you use it? Because the first time you do it is just the first time. And then and the, every time you bring out this thing, it gets better and more and bigger. And the exposure you have and the language you're giving expands. And that's how your child's natural language will expand at the same time. Okay, everybody, we've made it over an hour. So thank you for watching this Timu haul. Really quick before I go, I have to let you know about my new virtual autism community. It's really important that you come and check it out because it's brand new. I just put it together. Head over to my website. If you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, first thing you do is click this green button and subscribe to my newsletter. And then scroll down and see this area right here where you see, has your child been misdiagnosed? You can click on that image or click on this green button right here that says, explore my virtual autism resources. I have developed a whole area section there are 20 plus hours of ad free videos for you there are um a forum, an entire forum where you can post questions, where I respond, you can post your progress, you can talk about your concerns, you can get directed to any of the videos. All of the workshops are in there. The virtual autism workshop is in there. The parent workshop is in there. All of it is included, all the training and the support. So you can talk to me on a forum. Plus I do dedicated live Q and A in my private group and that's all over on my website. YouTube is just not able to support the kind of interactive community that, <clears throat> that I wanna develop for you. And so I'm asking you, begging you to slide over to my website and really evaluate the new resources that I've developed. Because if you enjoyed this video and you liked the kind of information, tips, ideas that I have to teach you how to do this, it's only gonna get more in depth, more detailed, and more specific for your situation when you're able to ask your personal questions and stuff. Okay, so please head over wavesofcommunication.com. The link is in the description. Please head over there and check out those virtual autism resources. And, and if you have a Timu wish list in mind, head down over there to, the link is in the description to my uh, link to download the app and a 30% off code to get your haul cheaper. 
and yeah, get started. And then let us know how things are going. Join us in the community, keep us updated. And my mission is to help all of the parents out there who really know that your child is capable of speech, but because of your situation, it got blocked. Whatever happened, the system let you down, you uh, got stuck into the COVID <laughs> situation and lockdowns and nobody was available for you. You were alone with your kids. You're frustrated. You're overwhelmed. All of those problems can be resolved when you have a plan. You know what to do and you have the support of a community. And all the parents are going through the same thing. And your child is not the only one that has been refused school entry this year. All the COVID kids are being presented to school this year and 60% of them are not ready. And so they're all going to be put into specialized classes or refused from school or declined from school. And this hall with the strategies in my platform are going to help you get your child caught up this year so that you can go back next year and say, look now, reevaluate, see my child. I have caught him up. He is sharing who he is. He is talking about his likes and dislikes. He is curious and exploring and interacting with other kids. He does respect authority and follow rules. And he does tell me about his problems when he has them. He's ready for school. And right now, if you can't say those things about your child, this opportunity to join my virtual autism community is what I've created for you. So think about it, explore it, talk about it with your partner, and then come join us because parents in our group are getting results. And I want the same for you. So I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching my haul and I'll see you then. Bye for now.